Hey, what's up guys? Okay, the time has finally come. We're gonna take care of all the optional bosses. And uh, I didn't wanna do this without everybody. I upgraded it one time. When I say it, I mean my Sea Wolf Cutlass. It is currently level four. And here we go, level five. Nice. I think that's max level in this game. Oh, apparently I have no idea what I'm talking about. Now we're going level six. Did these things max out at level 10? 10,000 salt for level seven in a drowned tome. Let's do it. I definitely have, I don't use any of my salt cases and the final one you get at the very end gives you a ton. Yeah, 10K, bam. Seven. All right, wow. Okay, that's it. You can't upgrade any further than seven. Okay. So we're going to hit like an absolute maniac right now. We're in Hager's Cavern, and we're going to take out Ron and Crane, which is almost comical because he's super easy. No, I never even tried to go up this way before. That would have been a pretty solid secret. That's how little respect I have for Ron and Crane. I'm just gonna heal and waste a healing item when I'm two feet away from the sanctuary. Well, that's clearly not where I go. Ron I would be running too. I would definitely be running if I saw my guy coming at him. No clothes on and an ultra great sword. This guy is crazy. It's like it's like in real life too. You see someone butt naked in the random spot, you're like, "Get me the hell out of here." I'll respect Ron and Crane enough to beat him drunk. We're on the wine. Yeah, four minutes if we include my little excursion. And here we go. All right, Ronin, let's see what you got, buddy. I don't think you got much, to be quite frank with you. Wow. He was already working in code before the fight started. Figured he would be stunned by now. Oh, you got nothing, Ronin. You're washed up, baby. Oh. Real washed up. Let's go. Ronin Crane. You know who Ronin Crane is? Ronin Crane is the Nick Cage of boss fights. Twisted horror. And this brings us to the other side of the ziggurat. Ooh, we're one-shotting with no buffs now. Our guy is jacked up. And let's be quick here. We have the actual tough boss coming up. The four kings in the Crypt of the Dead Gods. So we're going all the way down. Take that off. Crypt of the Dead Gods. Here we go. This isn't a good spawning place to get there. At least I don't like it. Oh, 
God. I'm just rushing right now. I just want to be there. want to fight this guy. want to show everybody what to do. That's how you do it. Otherwise you eat way too much damage. I didn't even realize this was here. More Lord Orders. All right, now we're in a good spot. Taking that big of a hit this early on is not good. This fight is probably the hardest in the game, I would say. Where am I going? Here. Slightly difficult to actually find this place, too. I like that they make the water go upside down. It's sweet. All right, so this is the jump right here. I gotta hit this jump. There we go, good. I feel like I miss that every time I play. So this boss also is tough because if you die, you end up having to redo so much. Pretty sure it's just straight down. I think it's like right here. Yeah, it is, okay. Yeah, just another one. Ooh, which way is it? I think it's where the light is. Yeah, you just follow the light. Hmm. I'm guessing it's here, yeah. Okay, and then this one you can actually see. All right, shimmering pearl. And we've been healing with these red shards for so long now, it's kind of crazy. We're going to get to the boss and finally have full health. Okay. Take these red shards off. They don't actually heal fast enough to be worth having on my toolbar. Absorb the physical. And then let's go. Oh, the Forgotten King, not the Four Kings. Oh, on the ground? Come on, man. Good, good. Ooh. Okay, we're doing pretty good. So this is just a technique. I just string them out across the map because they have different movement speeds than one another. Oh, man. That damage was insanity. Oh, my God. Okay, so I think I'm so jacked at this point in the game, it just doesn't even matter what I do. This is just an easy one shot. What do you got, baby? Oh, he's got that, which didn't hurt. <laughs> oh. This is like when you're a little kid and you're playing Bond and you entered in all the cheat codes or you know not Bond let's say Contra like when you're playing Contra back in the day and you have 99 lives and you can't die Ron and Crane got beat down the Lost King got beat down so I think the way the lore goes is the false god is the final boss because gods are stronger than kings 
but that's the king who ruled the area before something corrupt happened. I can't remember what. But if I recall, I think that is the very last boss in the game. I could check just to make absolutely sure that we haven't missed anybody, but I don't think there are any more bosses left in this game, which would mean that we have to finish this playthrough. And I don't think I'm going to beat the game again because it just doesn't... Everyone saw all the content. It just doesn't really make sense. And, um, yeah, we were at the level 5 Berserker anyways. This is level 5 Berserker, so we're three le levels short of that. Um, so let me just take a... Okay, so I just went online and confirmed we have killed every single boss in this game. Um find it interesting that we have killed every boss in the game, but for some reason this woman won't give me every miracle in the game. It just doesn't make sense. So, let me just walk you guys to the end. But before we go to the end, why don't we take a look at the Tree of Skill. So, the Tree of Skill, there's a ton of different ways you can go here. We didn't even go to the left. My very first playthrough was a mage. This is right here, these tomes. This is, that increases your magic, and these allow you to cast incantations and spells. And we have the staves, and basically, I don't want to deviate too far from what we've been doing, but this allows you to cast spells and kill people with magic and fire and electricity. And it's really cool. I, I recommend the mage playthrough a lot. The only playthrough I haven't beaten is the uh, archer and the guns. I haven't used the pistols or the crossbows yet. Um, I have a file that can utilize all the different armors, all the light armor. I haven't done the whips yet. That was one I was going to do, but then once you beat the game like eight times, you get bored. You don't really want to beat it with whips. I have beaten it with daggers. Daggers was just very underwhelming. In Dark Souls 3, that was a good adaptation they put in, was making the rogue class really strong. They made the uh, twin cell swords in Dark Souls 3 really strong, to the point where they do as much damage as the two-handed ultra great swords. And that is my favorite playstyle by far. They didn't quite nail the assassin uh, path as well as I would have liked them to. I think that was like my third playthrough. My second was the... Uh, was the miracle so the first time i beat it i went all strength and all heavy armor the heavy armor just makes you really slow and you take a lot of damage the amount of damage absorption you get isn't worth the speed loss that you receive so you end up just taking a lot more hits and you mitigate the hits but it's like it, i would rather just be fast and, and wreck the person anyways because if i'm fast and i'm nimble i can just play better and not get hit and just walk through everything kind of like we did here um and yeah, I mean, all the way up here, we got the heavy armors and the heavy mace fighter. Oh, this is the two-handed great hammers and great axes. Oh, maybe that's what I wanted to go towards and I didn't actually know where I was going. Yeah, this tech tree can get a little confusing. Class 5 shields. I've never used a shield once in my entire life in this game. I never plan on doing that either. Um... So yeah, it's just like Final Fantasy X. There's a ton of different ways you can take your character in this tree of webs. And it allows you that I think if you create a guy who is max soul level, you could be a hybrid of every single thing you see here. And every time you beat the game, if it's very similar to Dark Souls, which it is, it should increase in difficulty by about 30%. So the enemies have 30% more health. Deal 30% more damage, but their movement speed and attack patterns all stay the same. So eventually, you'll be able to get your guys strong enough that you can move like you're walking as if you don't have armor on, but you have class 5 armor on with all the miracles and spells in the game. So you're super strong, but the enemies are ridiculous as well. You're not one-shotting anything. And I think the Spindle Beast will still one-shot you too. So let's get out of here. I'm just going to uh, jump through the end, show you guys what the ending looks like, and then we're going to call it quits on uh, Salt and Sanctuary here. 
Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to put a boss fight compilation together where I'm going to have every single boss fight in a video. I'm going to have, I think in that video, I may do like all boss fights plus secrets. And there's a secret creed that you can get to um, that I didn't show you guys. On top of the secret creed, there are a couple things you can do. You can desecrate where your uh, sanctuary is by joining another creed and then attacking the people there. So you can like go total madman status and kill the blacksmith, the alchemist, and the cleric. And they, when they die, summon like boys from their hit squad back home. And those guys come... And they're really tough, and you gotta kill them. And if you kill them, I think you get, like, a stained page. It just basically says, oh, you sinned, and your guy's a really bad person. And you show that to this hidden creed, and this hidden creed is apparently the really evil creed in the game. They're like, oh, we're totally into doing that type of stuff, join us. And I think they give you, um, dark magic? I think they give you dark magic spells, which is really good if you're a mage. But I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll have to explore that further before the final boss. Not the final boss, before the final um, video, just to make sure I know what I'm actually talking about. Okay. And then this is the final room. This is it right here. I wonder if you could go past this. Can you? Oh, you can. It's on the other side. Heart of Darkness awaits. Oh, and we lost our weapon. But we're swimming. Ageless solace. Clasped by death. Cursed no longer. Gasping breath. And then a tree blooms. I don't know if that symbolizes that we just saved the island that we were on or not. I'm not positive. Like I said, the guy that made this game followed Dark Souls to such a T that even the story doesn't make sense. So, But I have to admit, I love games that are all gameplay based. This game is one of those... The gameplay is a 10 out of 10. I haven't played Dead Cells. I played Death's Gambit for a second. I don't think Death's Gambit's going to hold a torch to this game at all. You go online, you look at these reviews, and people are like, Oh, Death's Gambit's awesome. That and Dead Cells. It's like, nah, you guys got to play Salt and Sanctuary. It's definitely the best indie game if you're looking for a Souls-like experience. But... I'm going to play Dead Cells. I'm also going to play Death's Gambit. I mean, after I beat the game, my opinion may change. I just highly doubt it. This is one of my favorite indie games of all time. So, I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, walkthrough. We're going we're gonna to keep hammering away with the videos. I got to choose a new topic coming up. But the next one is going to be, like I said, all boss kills. And on top of all the boss kills, we're going to have the secret creed and desecrating a sanctuary so we're gonna do a little bit of the crazy stuff and uh yeah that's pretty much it catch you guys in the next one see ya